part two of the Petersfontein Pass covers the final two kilometers of the descent. If you intend driving this pass, it's important to watch part one first, which contains the Google Earth orientation clips, as well as other important information pertaining to safety, historical and technical. As this descent has consistent gradients of below 1 in 8, it's best to run down this hill against engine compression to save on the overuse of the footbrake. The Petersfontein farm has a fascinating history. A book written by Mr. J.F.D. Creel reveals a fascinating historical record of the farm life in the valley. Two coloured men named Klaas Voegts and Jan Peters delivered a load of ivory to the governor of the Cape Colony. In return for the ivory, each was allowed to select a farm in the colony. Klaas Voegts is a well-known name by modern standards and his friend Jan Peters found a farm with a strong freshwater spring which was promptly named Petersfontein. This dates back to 1756. Once you've reached the end of the pass at the crossing of the Petersfontein River, you have the choice of retracing your route back to the R318 the way that you arrived, or you can return via the Patatsfontein Pass if you're in a 4x4.